Hey everyone. Um, I hope you were able to find in time the uh, study guide. I really apologize. I, I got to this evening and I realized I hadn't posted it. Um, but I posted it probably about an hour, a little more than an hour ago. Hopefully that was plenty of time for you. But uh, it's uh, this one here, Romans uh, 1, 24 to 28. Uh, that still leaves us with some verses. Uh, a, a lot of tonight. Uh, you'll take the time to uh, say hello to us. That would be great. I always look forward to seeing uh, who's with me. So uh, feel free to sign in and say hi. But I'm um, trying to think if there's anything that I need to tell you tonight other than that. Uh, be sure and share this on your, uh, on, on your Facebook page, uh, providing that you're, you're watching in a format that you can do that. But uh, the more people that you encourage to watch, why the more opportunity there is for the gospel to get out. Um, Okay, let's what is here in Romans, um, especially tonight, um, this is going to be uh, probably uh, one of the more difficult uh, pieces of material to talk about, uh, especially, Lord, since it always lends itself to political discussion, and we're not here, Lord, to make political points. We're here, Father, to expose the gospel, to expose Christ to people so that they can know who he really is, and I pray, God, you would help us with that great task. Leaves their own They think Jesus it ought to be. And God, that's not our desire tonight. Lord, in fact, that's something that to us would be something of the devil's uh, making, not of our own. Uh, God, we do not want to be in league with your enemy. We love you. And we cherish you, Lord. We cherish your word. And we cherish the people, Lord, that we're sharing your word with. And we ask, God, that you would be with us tonight and that, Lord, you would pour out mercy and grace upon us, that we might speak truthfully, that we might speak honestly, and that we might uh, bring and not servants always walk obediently before you as your son did. In Jesus' name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Okay. Well, uh, as we're, again, as we're getting ready, why, if you're tuning in, I invite you to sign in and say hi to everybody. Uh, it's kind of a way that everybody gets a chance to know who they're studying with tonight. Uh, if you have any questions during the evening, We are going to be talking about human sexuality. If prepare yourself for that, I'm going to be as gentle as I possibly can on the subject, but I'm also going to be um, as honest as I have to be. Okay? And I will make you that... Uh, that promise. Uh, this is not uh, this is not something that is easy to talk about in this day and age. But I will not back down from it. Okay. So we're going to open up the scripture, and uh, we're going to read Romans. Verse 
23, even. And uh, verse 25 to start with. But verse 23 has has some um, effect on verse 24. So we're going to start there. Uh, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own served the so these verses verses 24 and 25 are where we're going to concentrate there is a lot packed into these verses and uh, we need to look slowly at what we're studying so that we do not uh, so that we do not miss the words and miss the wording okay so we're going to start out with tw with a question 1a the word wherefore in the king james language means or refers to what um, that I think this this is important. If we're going to understand uh, is the or and wherefore. Um, the word therefore means a fact has been established. So based upon this fact, this also is true. That's what the word therefore means. It means since I have established something over here, I can now establish this next thing here. But the word wherefore, on the other hand, is about cause and effect. Because of this cause, there is this effect over here. So the word wherefore here is trying to twenty-two, twenty-three, and reflect it again in verse twenty-five. Um, it says, "Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God." into an image make like, made like corruptible men, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Uh, verse 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. Okay, and we've talked about this maybe more than you wanted to, But then, huge, huge problem in the Christian community. And that huge problem is the problem of make believe Jesuses. Uh, if you were to ask people, who is Jesus? Uh, they would start with the obvious Christian. Bible response. He's the son of What is Jesus not like? What is Jesus trying to accomplish? What was the purpose of Jesus' coming? You are going to then all of a sudden get a myriad of answers. Uh, you you might get you you might get uh, some very very stringent answers, where they make Jesus sound like he's completely angry and completely intolerant, and completely uh, you know just separated, uh, not just not just separated as in holy, but mentally separated, emotionally separated, uh, spiritually.
but you side of themselves they have so much intolerance and so much anger towards society around them that they have created a Jesus that is anthropomorphically uh, representing their own interior person. And then you might have somebody completely on the other end of things saying, oh, Jesus is all love, and Jesus just, he, he cares about everybody, and he would never do anything. Father almost. And he understands that people his blood so that those people they can still go to heaven just by believing in him. Okay, so you're going to have people at that end of the spectrum too and that's also not biblical. Okay, so he's not the stringent Jesus on the other end. He's not the the laissez-faire Jesus on the other end either. And he's not any of the stuff in between either. Any of the combinations... ...is... And that's not what I'm doing here. I'm trying to say I am who I am, okay? You get to know me, and you get to know me better and better and better. You're going to find out, although maybe you think that I'm a very smart human being or whatever, or maybe you think I'm a very dumb human being. I have no idea how you think about me. But here's the thing. The more you get to know me, the more correct you realize my personality is the more you begin to realize that I'm not a set of rules, I'm not a set of principles, I'm not a set on certain standards of living and certain principles of living and certain bits and pieces of But I have a very complex personality. Uh, I, I, I joke around a lot, I kid around a lot because I'm a very fun-loving person, but that's not all who I am either. I'm also a very serious person, I'm a very deep person. I seem to be extroverted to a lot of people, but really there are times where I just need my solitude. And, and there are times when I go into a crowded room and I just go off in the corner and sit down. Because I just, I don't know people, and I don't really know who they are, what they expect of me. And I figure, well, you know, I can deal with one person at a time much better than I can deal with trying to... It has several layers. Daddy, I'm, you know, I'm a friend. I am... Uh, I, I'm a movie lover. I'm, uh, you know, I, I like certain kinds of food and uh, probably most kinds of food, to be honest with you, and maybe too much food. But what I'm trying to say is that you're not going to be able to pin me down. You're just going to have to accept that whatever I am, I am. And it's the same thing with Christ. Whatever Christ is or whoever For instance, he has made it known to us that uh, he has certain likes and dislikes. The scripture lays those out. He's also made known to us that he's an obedient servant for the Father, so we can study that and we can understand that aspect of Christ. We know that he's a savior. We know that, that he's the creator. We know that nothing was made that was made uh, wasn't made through him. 
So we have a lot of facts about Christ and we can get to know those facts. But in the end, we have to know the Christ that really is. And sometimes in order to know the Christ that really is, Christ. Well, then it doesn't matter if that's the case. It doesn't matter uh, if this person thinks Christ is this or if that person thinks Christ is that. It matters everything. It matters everything. Listen, because, because Jesus did not leave it to you to decide who he was. Jesus intends for you to seek him out daily, to get to know him, to seek intimacy with him, and to desire to do his will, and to One description means that you have no right to decide for yourself who Jesus is. What you have the right to do is obey him. Do what the Bible tells you to do. Do what the Spirit is telling you to do in the moment. Okay, this is, this is a big, big deal. Now, I'm noticing a little bit of darkness on the one side of my head, which is actually over here. Okay. Okay. Now, the scripture here says <clears throat> in the King James, God also gave them up. Okay, it's, a, it's an important phrase. What does that mean? He gave them up. And who does he join with the word also in giving up? Okay, he it says God gave God also gave them up, so somebody else must have given them up if God also gave them up. Um, the first part of that uh, in other words, the sinner. Idols and images made in the likeness of corruptible man, birds and fish, and animals that walked across the ground. Okay? So the sinner gave up on God, so God also gave up on the sinner. And I know that we are inundated all the time, aren't we? With people that, oh, God never, ever will give up on you. God will never, ever... If you are a Christian, to convert you, saying he can. Do his will. And he will do that not against your will, but he will do that at your pleasure. Because when you finally are, because a, a Christian, listen, a person who has been converted wants to be in agreement with the will of God. Wants to be. Okay, we seen with this idea of becoming a Christian that all that means is that you decide well you know maybe I'm going to believe in God and and after that maybe you decide I'm going to go to church 
And then after that, you decide, maybe I'm going to get a little involved with the church. Maybe after that, you decide, finally, I'm going to read the Bible a little bit. Uh, and then maybe after that, you decide, and then you decide, and then you decide, until finally one day, all of the decisions that you're making that are defeating your will, defeating your lusts, defeating your pride, you finally see. trying to be something that you're not, and then you just all of a sudden walk, wake up one day and decide, I'm too busy to go to church. And then you, just, you start undeciding everything. I don't like reading, so I'm not going to read my Bible. You know, I, I don't want to be with people the, today, uh, so I'm not going to go to the fellowship dinner. Uh, you know, I, then all of a sudden it's like... <sighs> why I was a Christian to begin with. And then you go wants to be can't think of any place better than to be worshipping at his feet and longs to have that breakthrough or a series of breakthroughs that will bring them to the point of service to God that they are wanting in their heart but not able to do. You get into heaven. The believer is what Christ is anxious to do. Okay, so so we see here at, in the scripture in Romans that the people, the sinner, gives up on God, so God gives up on the sin. Okay, make make no mistake about this. Okay, that does happen to the sinner. It does. It never happens to the never happens to the saint, but it does happen to the sinner. Research here. We're looking in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3 to start. And what we read here is this. The Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. And yet his days shall be in 120 years. Okay, that's the full verse. But the point we want to look at there comes a sinner that he will not continue to strive with them. Now, if God is making the effort to save the sinner, he's making the effort to bring the sinner into submission then he is righteous to do that and if the sinner then resists God and resists God up to the point at which it, it, it makes what we are seeing that's a dreadful thing. It's a dreadful thought that, uh, that God might actually stop trying to save you. That you may be so rebellious. Now, a person that's in that situation that is so rebellious that God has given up on them, 
they're actually quite thrilled with it. Because now their conscience won't bother them, and now they can do whatever they want to do. Tend with. Why should ye be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart faint. And so God says here in Isaiah chapter 1, and here now he's talking to uh, the nation of Judah, which are his people, but these are not converted believers. These are believers according. What's the point? What's the point? You already have. And so God backs off and lets them go. Now, again, this isn't the result that you want, uh, unless you're not a Christian. If you're not a Christian, The thought of not having God breaks your heart. The thought of not being with God breaks your heart. Okay, so there is there is a definite difference between saint and sinner. In that when he The first thing that people do is dishonor their own bodies between themselves. It is one of the first lusts that they will satisfy when God is no longer striving with them. When God is no longer trying to, trying to get their attention, no longer trying to save them, making himself known no longer uh, the reason is better than you're seeing in other, in other uh, translations okay what honor is being dissed to dishonor a person I'm saying dissed and now I'm not just saying that because I'm trying to be hip or something okay I, I don't really care about that what honor is being dishonored here okay here is here is the first of probably some of the difficult things that we're going to have to talk It is a tremendous honor to create a child. This is what the scripture means. Okay? I'm not bringing this up out of nowhere. God says in Malachi 2, I brought you together that you might bear to me godly offspring. He tells Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. Of the Peruvian human race. This is the honor that God, now God intended child bearing and child creation to be an honor 
because it is the closest you and I will ever be to knowing what God felt in Eden when he created Adam. endurance of God, the love of God, the patience of God, the perseverance of God. You will understand all of these things in bringing up and rearing a child to serve him and to know him. Now, unfortunately, what has happened is that since we have exchanged the real Christ for pretend Christ's, to different bodies. Now, I need to make a side note here real quick. Okay. Within a marriage, the pleasure even if it doesn't produce a child. Okay? I need to make that note. You need to understand, I am not preaching some kind of crazy, uh, you know, Intimacy is only for the production of children kind of a, of a teaching. That's not even a gospel doctrine. Okay, the gospel doctrine... ...produce fruit... ...children. The intimacy you have with Christ when you interact with other people who don't know Christ, they are going to see your intimacy with Christ and if Christ is is working in their lives to save them, which your presence there at the table or whatever talking to them is an indication that Christ is trying to reach them, they're going to notice your intimacy with Christ and they're going to want to be intimate with Christ too. not always spiritual children. Sometimes it is just a, a, a tremendous uh, blessing of fellowship at a, at a level with Christ that uh, I would say supersedes, goes beyond the intimacy that a woman and a man can have within marriage. Okay, and, and so the idea that we dishonor our bodies by going dishonor. You're taking something that was intended by God as a as a gift to help you to understand what it is to create a life. A tremendous honor in God's eyes, and you've reduced it down to pleasure. So this is what Paul means dishonoring of our bodies. He doesn't mean Okay, so intimacy within marriage, even if it doesn't produce children, God ordains that. He wants that. In fact, he designed it. Because why? He wants it to reflect the intimacy that he desires to have with you in Christ. And when you have intimacy with Christ, why you produce spiritual children as a result. Intimacy with Christ is 
wonderful and intimacy between a husband and a wife is wonderful and so god is speaking here of the dishonoring of your body taking that ability that you have to produce life Um, and we settle is that these make believe Christs give us permission to use something that was intended as a great honor and reduce it to recreation. Okay? Now, um, let's move on to the next couple of verses. 26 and 27. For this cause, God... which is against the natural use of the women burned in their lust toward one another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their that error which was meet. Okay, so let's talk about this. The clarification of order affection that God put his stamp of approval on and has said, This is great. Oh, I just noticed hi Lord. good to see you. Okay. And um, in uh, the the uh, clarification uh, is found in Leviticus 18. Now I'm not going to go over Leviticus 18 with you tonight. Okay, that would just that would just serve to drive an unnecessary uh, name. Uh, with the themes of incest, homosexuality, and bestiality, okay? But Leviticus 18 defines this. It clarifies it. The reason God has Leviticus 18 in the Scripture is because everything you see in Leviticus 18, somebody within that camp of people was doing it and somebody within the within the uh, the clarification that in Exodus 20 but in Leviticus 18 he wants to detail what does he mean by this. Okay? So he gives a, a rather satisfying list of inordinate affection that men are not to pursue. affections someone of the opposite sex let's just stick with that okay they're not to pursue that okay someone who has an affection of the same sex they're not to pursue it someone who really loves animals they're not to pursue it, okay? Someone who has extra affection for somebody within their family. Uh, 
affection where there's the green. God has all these warnings. Stop, don't enter, go back, turn around, you know, uh, all kinds of warning signs. And you're just burst through those. Prior to Leviticus 18, they didn't have these warning signs. They didn't have, all they had was common sense. If common sense told them not to, then probably they didn't. He was married to his sister. Isaac was married to his cousin. Uh, so was Jacob, married to his cousin. Cousins in that particular case. Okay, so Cain, for instance, everybody says, well, where'd Cain get his wife? It's it's really a simple matter. He married one of his sisters. That's just all there is to it because everybody came from Adam and Eve. So the... What if I'm, well, you're not supposed to be consumed with lust for. Okay, either you have not been saved and converted by God, or you are living by the flesh. You have been converted, but you're living by the flesh, and you're not telling the flesh, no, you're not obeying the ordinance of God to stay within the framework of marriage uh, an ability to understand what ordinate and inordinate affections are by the details laid out in Leviticus 18 okay now how does having a proper view of of God prevent this degradation of the human will? That's an important question. If you understand who God really is, and that you cannot really understand him, because God is holy, you're not, be able to please him uh, with invention. You won't be able to add anything. You won't be able to bring anything to the table that he doesn't already have. And so you will understand then that the only way that you can please him is through the obedience that comes by faith. So you have to have faith in God because God did all the work. God, God is Uh, that is, that he gives you a new nature, the nature of Christ, rather than the, the sinful nature that you were born with. And now that nature of Christ desires to bring you into intimacy with Christ, and so it will not be satisfied until you are living a life of intimacy with Christ. But your flesh, on the other hand, has been trained by the old nature, and it Or okay. so the idea of a Christian that is involved in inordinate affection, uh, it, it is not an, an enduring sin. Uh, a person may sin and they may sin horribly after they become a Christian, but God will still find a way to bring them back to repentance. And, and reinstate them in forgiveness, and he will discipline them, believe he will discipline them. But then he will bring them back to himself. He 
not be satisfied. So the the struggle that we are, are looking at tonight is one that meets every one of us where the rubber and the road meet. Because every one of us, we're being inundated with videos on the internet, with movies on the big screen and the small screen, with TV shows that make light of in the bar and around the activities of our community being inundated with these why because people don't have a proper understanding of who God is they do not consider knowing God to be important. And so they have abandoned that knowledge. Take a look at Proverbs 29, verse 18. There is no vision. Happy is he. Now, in the NIV, it says, where there is no vision, the people cast off restraint. Um, it's, it's in keeping because the idea of the King James that without a vision, people perish is the end result of casting off restraint. Where there is we were talking to, my wife and I were talking earlier today that for a lot of Christians, church has replaced Christ. Everything is for the glory of the church. And in this particular Christ under the and will exalt an imaginary Christ so that the world will look at their church, either their local organization, their denomination, and will say, Oh my, look. sensitive oh how politically correct they are oh look at all the sociological things that they're accomplishing it's horrible it's horrible that our churches things that God gave us so that we would his rendered it all impotent and have said to ourselves the only way God will ever be great is if we make a name for our organization it's disgusting God help us Hi, Tim. You're probably coming right in the middle of my little my, my little bit of, of indignation. Sorry that that's where you had to enter. Oh, Parish. 
It has nothing to do with having a vision for where you as the pastor or you as the board or you as the people of the church would like to see the organization head. It has nothing to do with that. Without a vision, the people perish means without a proper vision of who God is, the people will cast off restraint and in the end will die. That's what it means. Now here the people... ...of who God is. I said to somebody the other day, the only reason that I'm as firm as I am in the pulpit is because I am fighting for the eternal lives of the people in my pews. I'm fighting for the eternal lives of the people that listen on the internet. I'm fighting for everybody's eternal life. And sometimes I look at what's out there on the internet God said, make your name great once again because I can't. This passage of scripture is huge. And it has been demoted to a slogan for a building fund campaign. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then they, then shall they seek a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priest, and counsel from the ancients. Do you see what, what the scripture is telling us here? We throw off restraint, when we don't have a proper vision of God, when we we go after the flesh, all of its lusts, first of all committing uh, c committing heterosexual sin, and then committing homosexual sin and other types of sexual sin, pursuing inordinate lust and affections rather than sticking with what is it. What was the second part of the scripture in Proverbs? But the one who keeps the law, happy is he. Your flesh is always saying, let me do what I want to do and then I'll be happy. But your flesh is dead. Making it happy is of no use to you. Make your spirit happy. Your spirit is eternal. Make your spirit happy. Stick with what is ordained by God. Not going outside of those parameters that he to you. Um, looking at 2B, uh, what is the recompense for the, this, it's a simple answer, but I really need for us to think about this. Okay, the simple answer is disease. That's the simple answer. Okay, the question is why? 
why does disease come in? Now, ultimately, it is because of the misuse of misuse them. Let's say you're going to use your your arm to uh, hammer a spike into a railroad track. Chances are you're going to break the thing, right? Not the track, but your arm. Okay. Let's say that you decide that you're going to take down a brick wall with your head. Chances are you're probably going to really hurt yourself. Maybe kill yourself. Why? Because you're using When I buy them, toys were not intended to be used. And what's the result? The toy breaks. And as a result of the toy breaking, either the child says, uh, stupid people, they didn't make this toy strong enough, or they just cry and bawl because their toy has broken. They don't say, I broke my toy. No, they say the toy broke. Okay. Why? Because of the sin nature. The sin nature doesn't look at the or in the case of the scripture, the activity that leads to the sexual disease. Nobody wants to look to that. To them, they should have been able to have done what they wanted to do, and the consequence shouldn't even have come as a result because it's what they wanted to do. And so the child that takes his toy and the person who abuses their body in some fashion does not blame themselves for breaking or hurting their bodies, but blames the disease or the injury for stopping them from being able to do what they want. Uh, they, they did not consider thanksgiving of God they didn't give thanks to him and the foolish hearts became darkened it starts with that and then they begin to make idols and they begin to make you know, now for us idols are not out of wood and stone anymore they're out of ideas and so we made idols out of ideas and we say to ourselves well it's not wood and stone and therefore it doesn't So, here is the uh, 8 o'clock, so we're, we still have two questions left. We'll pick those up next week. I may just uh, finish up the, uh, the chapter and have that guide ready for you as well. But, uh, but listen, if... are in a big mess. Oh, of them. Let them 
deep into inordinate affections as they want to. He is going to let them keep going until, until they have legalized pet, pedophilia, until they have legalized reality, until they have legalized uh, any of, of invention of pleasure solely for the sake of dishonor. more people. God help us. Let's pray. Really hard. It is hard because a lot of us have people that are relatives and friends and they are lost in mess and they have justified it and justified it until their will is a fortress of solitude. I, I have to deny what's true. I have to stop making comments and I have to stop having conversation. God, we can't do it. We just can't. We love these people and we want them saved and we want them right with you. And God, we don't know what to do. And so this is what we say, Lord. Please send revival. Please honor your son Jesus once again. But we'll then would bless the study, no matter who it gets to, no matter what person listens to it, whether they hate me or hate us for putting it out or not. It's irrelevant, Lord. As long as it will save one life, it's worth it. God, we love you, and we want to honor you. So help us to get to know the you, and to put aside our fake Jesuses. Uh, my passion was such, but. The buffering? Yeah. That was very distracting the things that we had said. And I know it was on mine, but it was on mine, but nobody else had the same problem. So I didn't say Okay. Anything. Well, I'm sorry about the about the buffering issue. I didn't realize we were having that. Um, it's possible that it's because of an accident that happened down the road and uh, electricity. folks and uh, if you play it back it probably will be uh, without the buffering all the time so uh, love you